So the other day I get a text message that says, hello, Chelsea. Okay, wait, why are they calling me Chelsea? Well, probably because this is one of the many Google voice numbers that I use to interact with scammers, and I have gone by the name of Chelsea before. But who is this? Well, it goes on to say, this is John Valdee. This is about store evaluation assignments, $577 compensation. USPS delivered a check of $2,477.85 to your mailbox. Here is the tracking number. I sent the instructions on what to do. Let me know if you understood. What on earth is he talking about? And that's when it hit me that I know Jean Valdi. I made a video about him over a year ago. I traced his IP address and I learned that he's in Nigeria and he's trying to sign people up for a car wrap scam. And he must still have my number, but he has it confused with another Chelsea that he's trying to scam. Now, what is the nature of this scam? Well, basically, they act like they're gonna pay you to wrap your car with something like Frito-Lay or Monster, and they'll send you a fake check to cover the cost of the materials. Then they'll have you cash the check and buy gift cards for the wrap specialist before your bank holds you responsible for the money that you just took out. But now John Valdi has switched up his scam, and now he's making you think that you're getting paid to be a secret shopper who's gonna go buy gift cards and evaluate the store where you shop. Scammers are always changing things, which is a little scary, but it's good job security for me. So I decide to have some fun and I respond and I ask, what address did you send the check to? And he responds with some address in California. Okay, I don't live in California. He definitely has me confused with somebody else, but I'm not gonna let him know that and I'm not gonna let him scam the other Chelsea. So I tell him that I didn't get it and he asks for my actual address. So I give him my personal PO box and he says, I'll get a check in a couple of days. So I check the tracking that he sends me and it looks like it wasn't delivered because the addressee is unknown. Yeah, probably because the only names on my P.O. box are Pleasant Green and Bend Over, not Chelsea. So now he's asking me for my physical address, which I would never give to him. So instead, I ask if I could get a virtual check. And he says, virtual check? Do you have means to print out the check? He sounds very impressed that I know how checks work. And I say, yes. Then he says, you will get the virtual check on Monday. Now, I think that I may have just given him an idea because instead of sending me the virtual check, he writes me the next day and says, good morning, Chelsea. Can you work as payroll clerk $3,000 monthly? Okay, so now he wants me to work for him. Now, this is how these Nigerian scammers get their fake checks to you in the United States. They trick people like me or Chelsea into thinking that we're working as payroll clerks. They send us labels and check files and they have us print them out and mail them. These are also known as money mules and more often than not, they have no idea what they're doing is illegal. They just think that they're working as payroll clerks for a guy named Jean Valdi. But I know better and now that I'm involved, I'm gonna burn this operation down from the inside. Destroy it! So John goes on to tell me that I might be sending out 20 to 30 checks every day and he's gonna pay me $3,000 a month. Wow, now I have no idea if he's actually gonna pay me or if he's just gonna use me for as long as he can and then go find another mule. I guess we'll find out soon enough. But the first thing that you need in order to print out checks is some check paper. So I head on down to Staples and I drop 25 bucks on a whole stack. Then John tells me to head to the post office and get some free priority mail envelopes. But if I have some ordinary brown ones, those will work as well. Turns out I actually run a small business shipping books, so I have plenty of brown envelopes. Then he asks me if I have plain white paper, and I say yes. Then he asks me if I have enough ink in my printer, and I say I think so. Then he says we can begin now. Also, we're going with UPS now, not USPS. Okay, whatever. He says, okay, I will send the checks. Check your email, I sent 20 checks. So I pull it up and this scammer has information on 20 people from all over the United States, and he's intending on cutting them a check but he needs someone in the United States to print them out on actual check paper so the banks will cash them. He says, please print one and send a picture to make sure it's printed correctly. So I do what I'm told to earn his trust and I print it out and I snap a picture. And he says, okay, so you're going to detach them separately. You should print the rest. Now I'm not gonna print any more, but I'll let him think that I will. Then he says, I will forward the labels now. You will print the labels on the white paper. I also send a letter. You will put 20 pieces and put each in the package. That is all. All right, I actually printed out John's letter and here it is. 
Dear applicant, kindly read these guidelines and follow the instructions. This is an instruction you will need to follow your auto wrap campaign. Payment regarding, yeah, okay. So he goes on to say you're gonna cash the check, take the money out, go buy gift cards, and then contact this guy. So yeah, it works exactly as I said it would. Well, John tells me I should drop them off today and the last pickup time is 5 p.m. So now I only have a few hours and if I don't deliver these checks to the UPS store, he's gonna fire me and find another mule to scam these people. So I go to work printing the UPS labels and cutting them out. Then I put on my superhero cape and I start trying to call these people and warn them what they've gotten themselves into. I figure if I have a name and an address, then I should be able to find a phone number in the public records. So I start calling. But a lot of these people aren't picking up. Please leave your message for five. And a lot of the numbers are disconnected. And a lot of people are just suspicious. Hello, I'm looking for a Kwan Yatra. I got a hold of one lady who actually fell for this scam once already. I put it into my bank. Uh oh. And it came back bad. And I guess they're gonna try to hit her again? So I'm not gonna be able to warn these people over the phone, so I've gotta come up with another way. So I void the checks that I've just printed out and I throw away the letter that he wants me to send and I draft my own letter. Dear applicant, we're sorry to inform you that we've gone out of business due to some illegal activities on our part. Needless to say, we won't be hiring you. Here's a treat to make it up to you. John Valdi. Then I drove over to the store and I bought some dum-dums and then dropped my letter with a dum-dum into each package. And I took those packages to the UPS store and they were soon on their way to their intended recipients. Pretty much the easiest job ever. And I wanted to see how long I could keep this going. So I wrote to John the next day and I said, is there any work for me today? And he said, yes, I'll be sending soon. You will be dropping off at the post office today and not UPS. And I was like, okay. And he said, how many USPS envelopes do you have? And I said, 10. I really don't have any, but I know that you can get these for free at the post office. And he said, okay, we need it to 40. 40? Holy crap, how many checks does this guy send out a day? And don't you think that he should make sure that I'm actually sending what he wants me to send first? But he ends up sending me 40 more pages of individual names. But he doesn't include a memo. And I said, is there supposed to be a memo going out with this? And he says, no, no memo. Okay, this might be a different scam, but he sends me the labels and asks, are you putting the labels on the envelopes now? So I do one and then I send him a picture to show that I am. Wow, you very fast. Are you going to drop them off at the post office soon? Yes, as soon as I stuff them with more letters and dum-dums. I tell him, yes, then he says, okay, let me know when drop off, how many USPS envelopes you have left. And I say, I have to get more. Yes, if you can get up to 50. 50, how many people does this guy have on the line? That's when I said, when do I get paid? And he said, soon, are you on your way to the post office? I say, yes, and then I quickly package the 40 envelopes and I head to the post office and I drop them all off. And I say, done. So at this point, my 20 packages from yesterday are on their way to mailboxes around the country, and there's 40 more right after that. Plus, I got another 50 coming tomorrow, but instead of John thanking me for my wonderful work, I get this message from him. Are you being serious? What is the meaning of this? And I was like, I dropped them off? And then he sends me this picture. <laughs> Someone must have received their letter and texted him this picture. He said, why did you send that? What is the meaning of this? And I've been caught, so I gotta be honest. And I said, that's what I mailed to the people. He said, why would you do that? So you did the same thing today? <laughs> yes. So you had plenty of time to buy check paper and mail this out. <laughs> yes. When do I get paid? <laughs> have you taken your medication today? And I said, yes, have you? Quit making Nigerians look bad. And he said, who are the Nigerians? And I said, don't be stupid, I'm tracking you. He said, probably you ran away from rehab. You are very sick. And I guess it is a little strange for me to spend two whole days buying check paper and suckers and mailing them out to strangers just for a good laugh. But I responded and I said, but at least I'm not a dum-dum. <laughs> and then he blocked me after that, so I don't get to hear his reaction when the 59 other people that he thought was gonna fall for his scam write him about getting a sucker instead of a check. Well, I hope you guys thought that that was funny, but more importantly, I hope you see how scammers could use you to carry out their scams. 
don't accept work from shady people like this. And keep in mind that mules that you might interact with could be victims themselves. Help them understand what they're involved with and get the right authorities involved. You don't want to get messed up in mail fraud. Hey, I appreciate you guys watching. I got a lot more scams to tell you about, so subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time.